welcome to Business Edition. In this program, we're going to be focusing on Samsung Tanzania, who have just launched the Samsung Galaxy Note 4, and we're going to find out what has been the expectations of the Tanzanian consumers and what's special about this smartphone device. And in the Entrepreneur today, we're going to be focusing on ARM Cement Limited, who have just commissioned the largest clinker and cement plant in Tanga, and it's going to be the largest in East and Central Africa. My name is Yvonne Msemebo saying welcome to Business Edition. We're going to start off with Samsung as we talk about the Galaxy Note 4. And to talk about this, I have the CEO of Samsung Tanzania, Mike Sale. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Yvonne. Nice to meet you. Samsung Galaxy Note 4 has now been launched into the Tanzanian market. Yes. Uh, but before we talk about... Um, what so you know? Uh, what the response has been so far uh, from the Tanzanian consumers? Maybe you could tell us a little bit more about this Samsung Galaxy Note 4. What's so special about this? Yeah, this is very special uh, mobile product, and it has 5.7 inch big screen, uh, yeah, mobile phone, and uh, the consumer not only Tanzania but globally, uh, they want. Bigger size of, uh, yeah, uh, bigger screen of uh, uh, mobile phone because they don't, uh, they are not only using mobile phone, uh, just uh, calling, mm -hmm. but they are using mobile phone for, yeah, uh, more some entertainment, listening the music and take a photo and watch the, yeah, some movies. Mm -hmm. The people, they really like this this feature. Comparing with the Note 3, uh, the size is the same, but uh, we adapt uh, quad uh, super AMOLED uh, screen. So it's much uh, brighter and clearer than before. And Note 4 has some uh, uh, improved function of uh, picture, especially selfie. So many of uh, Tanzania people, they like to uh, take a uh, selfie. Mm -hmm. So for example, uh, to take a selfie, we should push the screen. Mm -hmm. It makes the, hand, the uh, quality of the uh, photo mm -hmm. uh, is, how can I say, uh, poor. Yeah. Oh, okay. But uh, now not poor. Mm -hmm. We can control from the back side, so without uh, uh, trembling, mm. yeah, uh, people can uh, enjoy selfie. So this kind of some uh, feature is added. W what is the expectation so far? Comparing with the uh, last year, uh, Note 3, Note 4 sales is increased by uh, 30%. So it's so really Tanzanian good. So the market is ready for such a device. Yes. When we look, you said that, you know the the market um, is ready for it right now. But uh, who are we looking at? Who 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 is your target for this device? According to our research, uh, the trend of uh, premium customer is globally same, and this uh, premium uh, customer uh, they are in Tanzania too. So we are targeting the needs for uh, premium uh, customer in Tanzania. What has the response been so far um, globally and maybe in Africa? As I mentioned, uh, the global uh, demand for big screen is increasing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, global customer, they are very well accept this uh, product. Mm -hmm. And not for yeah, after launch, uh, yeah, within 30 days, we sold uh, 4 million sets, so uh, not only global, but even Tanzania, we are yeah, very fast. What is Samsung doing to make sure that, um, you know, with the launch of new dev uh, um, electronic devices, such as smartphones, you know, into the market, okay. uh, we often face the problem of counterfeit or fake products, so what is Samsung doing to make sure that, mm -hmm. you know, this problem is being addressed? So that you don't spoil, uh, you know, the market for your products. Low end entry, yeah, affordable smartphone segment. Uh, yeah, they are entering, and they are making some uh, counterfeit mm -hmm. product. 
But this category is a little bit uh, different. And we are uh, still dominant. And beside of uh, yeah, this category, about counterfeits, uh, Samsung is building our service network. So this is very uh, different point. What the counterfeits uh, cannot uh, provide mm -hmm. to the customer. So we really want to protect the rights of uh, Tanzania people. So better quality and better service. So with this uh, excellent service, uh, finally we uh, have some confidence. Uh, finally, we can stop mm. uh, the counterfeits, and we are providing two-year warranty. And this is some um, another different point. Uh, so we are providing twenty-four uh, month uh, free uh, warranty uh, service. So. Even though there are something wrong in the uh, mobile phone, but we still uh, support the customer. So warranty and service, service policy, policy and a more uh, good uh, shopping experience. We are investing our money to the uh, uh, brand shop. Mm -hmm. So people come and see better quality and uh, they can exper experience the difference. How does Samsung address or approach competition, you know, mm -hmm. um, globally when it comes to looking at smartphone devices? Because I know there's so much competition right now. Mm -hmm. You have to be on top, you know, you have to come up, we keep coming up with new things. Mm -hmm. But um, with Samsung, yeah, mm -hmm. um, where do you see yourselves in terms of um, competition with the, with the other companies? Way of uh, competition, yeah, and the uh, way of how to uh, win, yeah. Samsung is different. We are not directly competing with the uh, low quality and yeah, cheap uh, mobile phone. We try to uh, catch the needs of customer and we try to yeah, meet the demand. And uh, sometimes we try to find out some unmet needs mm -hmm. and uh, make it uh, produce mm -hmm. the kind of uh, uh, product. Mm -hmm. So actually, you are reading the market uh, because you are not following some uh, temporal uh, trend mm -hmm. and you are creating the trend. For example, note. Yeah, we introduced 2011 Note 1. Yeah, at that time, the analysts and many competitors, they very confidently uh, yeah, comment, no customer will buy big screen of uh, yeah, smartphone, but we catch that market, and yeah, we invest our R&D some resources. Mm -hmm. And now we make, create this category, and we still remain the, as a leader. Mm. Yeah, that's the different point, and that's the different way of uh, competition. What is uh, Samsung Tanzania doing mm -hmm. in the area of corporate social responsibility? Because mm -hmm. as an investor in this country, this is something that uh, you have to do in the country. Company philosophy tell everything, yeah, <laughs> here. You can see, we want to devote our people and technology uh, to create uh, some uh, better life uh, for the people. So we know only people can um, make things change. And Samsung believe uh, our digital technology can change the world. So our interest is not every year. Mm -hmm. Our interest is in our strength. Mm -hmm. Means education and medical.
in this entrepreneur segment, we're going to be featuring ARM Limited. And to talk more about this, we have the chairman of ARM Cement Limited in Tanzania, Leonard Mususa. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Uh, we understand that recently um, ARM um, commissioned one of the largest single clinker plant in East and Central Africa. What was the interest in investing in Tanzania and in Tanga particularly? Right, I think uh, one reason is was historical. Um, you know, if we go back, um, the founder of ARM Cement, uh, the, the Mze von Rama, uh, he started his career in Tanzania or then or Tanganyika in the 60s. Uh, so this was a natural sort of uh, attraction to the country, you know, to be part of the uh, East African community, one history, culture, uh, language. Uh, but the other was uh, there was an underserved market in Tanzania, uh, an underserved market in terms of uh, the demand was much larger than the supply. Uh, and there wasn't much capacity being added until very recently. So it made sense for uh, ARM Cement, given the history and uh, the, the sort of historical linkage with AMZE, to look at it with a long-term view to satisfy local demand in the immediate, but also looking at the market as a dynamic and developing market, which, which it is. Uh, so that, that, that is a very attractive proposition. Uh, Tanga, Tanga has got a natural attraction because of the raw material element, uh, you know, so we have a source of raw material in Tanga which enables us to produce our own raw material for our cement manufacture. Okay, so does this mean that you have enough raw materials, there won't be any need to import? Correct. Uh, for us, uh, with the commissioning of the clinker plant in Tanga, uh, we have enough uh, production of the raw material that we need to produce cement for the local market. Uh, we will have two, we have two plants, one in Tanga and one in uh, Mukuranga, Dar es Salaam, for cement production. Uh, and we can satisfy our needs fully uh, for uh, raw material from the clinker that we produce in Tanga. So we will be self-sufficient. How much investment are we talking about that has gone into this? And what does this mean in terms of job creation for Tanzanians, the opportunities? In terms of uh, investment, if we look at from the time we came in, in 2001, uh, sort of with uh, lime production, now into uh, cement uh, in Mukuranga and Tanga, over the 13 years we've invested 200 million US dollars uh, to date. So it's quite a commitment to the country. Um, and that already has created uh, employment to the tune of 1,800 um, direct employment, you know, without really looking at uh, the multiplier effect. Because once you have uh, the plant, there are suppliers uh, of goods, there are suppliers of services, uh, and that has a multiplier effect uh, in the, on the economy in Tanzania. Um, local supply, for example, uh, I think we've been used to seeing uh, local or foreign investors, you know, importing uh, goods to be able to uh, complete their projects. But, for example, um, in the construction of the Tanga plant, we actually used local steel. And I think that is a uh, shows our commitment to the country. Uh, and over this period, in the last 13 years, um, we have not sort of repatriated any money in terms of dividend, in terms of profits or anything. All the money made to date has been reinvested into the country. So that shows the commitment of ARM to the country in the long term. But despite this commitment to the country, and but how do you assess the uh, investment uh, envi environment right now? Um, is it conducive? What are the challenges that um, you know investors like you are facing in production of cement? You know, I know there's been some 
challenges that you've been um, some companies have been facing, particularly in the area of energy. Is it something that uh, you have been able to address yourselves, or do you think that that is something that the government needs to address to date? Okay. I think the market, from the perspective of uh, demand and prospective demand, is very good. Uh, I mean, you'd have seen quite a lot of uh, construction, uh, both in the housing sector as well as the infrastructure sector, and that will grow uh, in, in the long term. Now, the, in terms of challenges of operating, I mean, clearly uh, we need reliable power supply. Uh, that's crucial. Now, we need to be guaranteed of that. I'm not quite sure I can say, you know, sort of uh, without any hesitation that uh, that will be okay going forward because we've had challenges in the past. Um, the cost of power is already a bit on the high side uh, and we, we, you know, we know we are threatened with an even more uh, increase in future. Uh, so I think the, 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 the government has to bear in mind that, uh, you know, uh, the cost of power uh, will increase the cost of production. And I think it is important that uh, power costs are kept to uh, a minimum uh, so that we can remain competitive, uh, both on a regional basis and internationally. Uh, but I think critically, we've got to have reliable power supply. You know, the quality of that power must be good. But more recently, uh, I think we're more worried about uh, the impact of uh, illegal or cheap imports. Uh, this has been a problem. It's an ongoing problem. Uh, and we need to make sure that uh, the playing field is level. We don't mind competing with other uh, producers locally because we can level the playing field and we can all be subject to the same conditions. But when we have cement being imported, avoiding tax, uh, and being offloaded on the local market cheaply, then that's not a level playing field. Uh, it kills the uh, businesses that are already here, uh, have invested a lot of money, etc., etc. Mm. In the past, uh, some of that has come through in the form of capital goods, so that if someone had a project here uh, and needed cement, they could list cement as part of their capital requirements uh, to import from overseas. And that came through legally untaxed. Mm. But they were importing more than they required for the project. And that the, the, the uh, additional cement was then offloaded on the local market. We don't think that is completely um, abolished. Uh, we know in July there was an announcement, uh, and I think the government has been supportive from that perspective, to remove cement from the list of capital goods so that People should not be able to say, you know, uh, cement is one of my categories and bring it tax-free because we have the capacity now locally. There's absolutely no reason why anybody should be importing cement in the country when we can produce it locally. So are we saying that maybe once um, the issue of um, cheap imports is addressed, Local producers um, in uh, of cement in the country will be able to uh, also consider bringing down further the the price of cement in the country. But still, it is still quite high, you know. We need to balance, you know, sort of quality and price. You know, we aim to produce the uh, best quality cement for the uh, construction industry, so we price accordingly. Because if you have, yeah. no, if you can but uh, let let me put it this way, you know, if we are empowered, you know. Volume will increase. Uh, we can invest in efficiency, in volume, etc., etc. That does uh, help us in terms of uh, containing costs like escalation. So sometimes what happens, you know, uh, price is um, is a build-up of many things. There is the operational side. There is the tax side. Now on the operational side, uh, you need to you can create efficiency. Uh, in-house. That we can do and we've got some of the most efficient operating plants. We're investing in clinker production so that we don't have to import clinker. So that again reduces the cost of our operations. So efficient plants, uh, making sure the raw material is sourced locally, produced locally, reducing the cost of that, make sure that we're the low cost producer.
if the tax are put at the right level, you know, and uh, the power costs are not increased, then yes, I think we can uh, assure the public that we will produce uh, cement and price it at a level that will be affordable. I've noticed that many of the cement com uh, companies in the country seem to like using animal names to brand the products. For example, ARM is using rhino cement. We've, we've got Trigger, we've got Simba. What is it about these animals <laughs> that you're competing in getting the names, which is the strongest I think I... animal? I think Tembo is the strongest, but you know, maybe you're saying rhinos is the strongest so far. But what is it about these animals that, you know, the, the uh, uh, animals we can identify strength with, uh, for example, the big four, right? Mm. The big four. No question that Tembo is stronger than, uh, yeah, rhino. Rhino. I would say Rhino is stronger than, uh, you know, uh, so it's, it's a question of perception. Yes. Uh, but we need to project strength. And uh, when you think about cement, you, you think of, of uh, strength. Uh, and we, we believe our cement is the strongest you can get on the market. Oh, and it's the, 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 uh, the, the Rhino uh, brand. And when we're looking at locally produced cement in terms of quality, you think that we are being able to produce cement at an international standard? Absolutely. Uh, and, and maybe to give you a measure of that. We can compete you know, with the international market. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Um, Rhino uh, produced cement for the region. Uh, started off in Kenya. In Kenya, we've already got uh, our, our plant certified for quality management, yeah? as well as environmental management. What does that mean? It means we are producing cement with quality control standards. Yeah? Uh, in some respect, better than European uh, manufacturers. So we are aiming for the top quality standard in the production of cement. We don't compromise. You know, this is not cement for uh, Tanzania or the local market. Mm -hmm. This is international standard. Um, you know, and and uh, we aim to achieve that wherever we're going to operate in the East African region. The Rano brand is going to stand for quality. Uh, we're going to be conscious of, of environmental management. Uh, so we will essentially maintain quality. How are you doing this in terms of uh, putting back, bringing back what you've invested in the company to the communities around, um, around your operations, right, in Tanga or whatever it is that you're doing elsewhere in the country? Uh, what have you done in terms of um, social development, health development of the communities that uh, you, you've decided to work with? As a group, ARM yeah, Cement, mm -hmm. uh, we have as part of our, um, uh, our, our plan, as part of our um, policy, you know, we have set up a foundation. There's a foundation that is set up already uh, in Kenya. We will have a similar one in Tanzania. And that is really aims at uh, creating a percentage you know, or hyping off a percentage of our profits into this fund for purposes of uh, contributing to the social um, investment. We focus on health, we focus on education, we focus on yeah, environment and all that. So, and we've done that in Kenya quite extensively. Uh, we've been providing uh, scholarships, etc., uh, etc., et helping health facilities around the communities that uh, we operate in. Uh, and this should be become visible in Tanga as we operate. Uh, Tanga perhaps even uh, in, in, in Tanzania generally, but more uh, around the areas we operate in Tanga, as well as Mukuranga. We're not just in Tanga, we mustn't forget Mukuranga in Dar es Salaam. Mm. So yes, we do create a percentage of profit and uh, put it into a fund, and that is then available for uh, projects that aim to uh, service the local community where we operate. Uh, plus, I mean, we, we make sure our plants uh, meet local environmental requirements. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not a question of giving them money after you destroy the environment. I think you have to be sensitive uh, when producing, making sure that you're not uh, creating health issues uh, in the process of production. And that but then thereafter, then you can also help them with uh, other social issues. Mm -hmm. And that's what has already been done in Tanga right now. Yes, we will, in, in the uh, setting up of 
the plants we're conscious of uh, making sure that we've got uh, uh, plants that are modern, uh, technologically controlled, you know, state of the art, uh, and conscious of uh, the environment, making sure that any emissions, etc., are properly managed uh, and we preserve the environment. You know, as I said, uh, it's early days, but we will make sure these are certified going forward uh, so that we can manage and submit reports to the appropriate authority just to make sure that uh, we, we do meet standards. Well, that's it from me, Ibo Namsemembo. Until next week, same time, it's goodbye from Business Edition.